Do you want early access? Do you want uncut reactions? If so, then check out our Patreon. Link in the description down below. Last episode was a bit of a downer. Saw that there were a lot of goblins that bit the dust and a lot of people who, uh, you know, a lot of suffering happened because of the the Kingdom of Falmouth and uh, the uh, behind-the-scenes work of Clayman. I'm not sure 100% like, what the true full extent of the damage is. There's really no telling. I'm fully expecting a level of ass-kicking retaliation that literally will make it to where humans will never, ever cross uh, Rimuru again. But I think he'll probably commit such an atrocity that it will, uh, that it will basically guarantee that no, like, there will be no 100% good relationship with humans overall. This is just my, my thoughts. Whether or not it happens, I guess we'll see. The title of this episode does bring a little bit more of a uh, light to the series. This is episode 8, Hope. Episode 8 of season 2, to be more precise. There you go. Old man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She show. Not, not old man. Oh no. Oh no. シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。シオ。
古竜は奇跡の復活を果たしたのだ魂を失った古竜は破壊の限りを尽くす意志なき邪悪な魔物いつもかつて友であったカオスドラゴンを封印しこれが魔王となった流行女の最初の偉業となった<笑> yeah, that's definitely her. That's Malim, all right. She's the daughter of a dragon? Jesus, no wonder she's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Oh, that could be. Also, Malim asked him to become a demon lord as well. But he said there wasn't really a benefit to it at the time. But now there is. Mm -hmm. お嬢様、血が拡散しないようさらに三つ目の結界を張った。念のため、ディザスターを捕食した時点で獲得していました。状況を満たせば、真なる魔王へと血を発芽させるには養分が必要です。養分となるのは人間の魂。必要となるのは
we saw him defending Shuna, and the fact that Shuna was still there meant that he did his job, but where we didn't see him in the hospital bed next to Gobta mm. and uh, and Hakuro, I knew something bad must have happened, and there you go. He was... Turns out he got killed. But... But hopefully they'll be back. For I hope so. so. I hope so, and... It's kind I, of slightly eliminates the impact of death in this show to an extent. Kind you know, of, like, kind of, but sort I was, of like Dragon Ball Z in a way. <laughs> it, yeah, but it, you got to think in terms of very rare circumstances. I guess only, he can only become a demon lord one time. So. Yes, and and it's not like he's going to be able to willingly eliminate ten thousand souls or ten thousand people. Again, mm. to become a demon lord again because it's literally impossible. Yeah. So I would say for this, yeah, it is. It is basically just him doing everything he can with what's at his disposal, and if it means if getting his friends back and getting like his, you know, Shion and Gobzo and all of the all of them back means that he has to sacrifice his peace of mind to become a demon lord. I mean, it shows that he's a great... Yeah, he at least cares for his citizens enough to be doing that. Mm -hmm. Like, he's willing to kill more than tw like 20,000 people. 20,000 humans. And to be honest, we've seen already in this world that being a demon lord does not necessarily mean you have to be evil. No. Because Melim is pretty chaotic neutral. And... Uh, it looks like Carrion is pretty much like. Oh, Carrion yeah. seems to be more of like a more of like a chaotic good. Yeah. Because he he's chaotic. Don't get me wrong, but he at least leans on the side of like people who help his compatriots or help his countrymen. He's I'm really not even him. sure if he's chaotic because I mean he runs a country, you know. So t clearly he has some respect for the law, like whatever law he lays down for his country, anyways. I guess, yeah. Where chaotic and uh, lawful and stuff um, kind of pertain to government is where I start to wonder, like, characters in campaigns that use that alignment and such are usually not responsible for making the laws themselves, you know? Yeah. So it's like, what happens when they are in a position of power where they actually define the law, like... How do you define them then, like, in terms of their lawful part of their alignment? Uh, it's like, does that automatically make them lawful because they're in the position that obviously they care about the law because they're setting it? But there's also people in positions of power that do make laws that don't care about the laws they make because they don't follow it themselves, you know? Fair enough. So, I don't know. I guess it depends on stuff like that. I guess it's like, would he stick to his own laws that he sets? Which I feel like he's the kind of guy that probably would. He seems like an honorable leader, you know? Yeah, he he does. He does, but at the same time, I mean, his. I guess it's more lawful, like how he punished Fo Phobio whenever he, like, knocked him basically into oblivion. Maybe he's more like lawful neutral. Like, he's not necessarily all for good because he is a demon lord, and it's more like he's lawful, neutral, neutral because he would probably do bad things if the situation called for it, you know? I don't doubt it. But Especially like, if it been he does it for the country. Man. He also doesn't necessarily, like, stick entirely to the side of just doing bad things or good things, you know? It's probably really what the situation calls for. So I'd say lawful, neutral might be his shtick. Yeah, I guess. All right, so anyway, that was uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, episode eight of season two, Hope, and um, God, what an episode! Uh, this, you know, what what this is leading to is is the showdown between uh, Rimuru and the Kingdom of Falmouth, and basically having to kill that many people. It's gonna be it's gonna be a hell of a task. I don't know what I don't know what all he's gonna have to do, or how he's gonna kill, like a like twenty thousand people like that, or if he's gonna take his time. I wonder if he's gonna meet them on a battlefield and is just gonna, you know, unleash Ifrit on them, or, or just 
go at them with like the black flame attacks. Well, I think just to make sure he absorbs enough souls, he's probably going to eat a lot of them. So I would say he's going to be activating gluttony and just being kind of like a wave of just like devouring slime, you know. Basically the all-consuming void. Mm-hmm. I can see that. <laughs> God. So, anyway, I guess that's going to do it, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. Be good people. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.